So today we're going to start by walking through a bunch of examples of the advanced Photoshop that you're going to be working on for assignment 102. Uh, and I'm going to try to talk through a lot of the strategies that people employ so that you kind of know where we're going. And then we'll move into the lab portion where we're actually going to cut people out. And I think this is a good um, precursor to what you're doing in the assignment. Chances are you're going to use the same strategy of masking. So it's a good way of kind of practicing that. And I'll walk you through the, the specifics about how we're going to do it and how we're going to create the masks and that sort of thing. These people that you'll cut out today in lab will end up being very useful when we do collage work down the road. So it's not something that's just a wasted exercise. You'll end up using these a little bit later on in the class. But before we get to that, we're going to talk first about the advanced Photoshop techniques that um, go into making images like this. And so, of course, some of them can end up being on the creepy side. But at the same time, what we're fundamentally doing is we're taking bits and pieces of images and we're compi compiling them together, compositing them together to bend reality. And so in something like this, obviously, this is not what the person looks like. But we're bending reality uh, into this Jekyll and Hyde sort of pose. And this is the kind of thing where it's really just two photos same lighting conditions, and then we merge the two using some creative masking techniques. And it's really not that hard as long as you take the photos at the same time with the same lighting conditions. I will end up being a broken record about lighting conditions today because that is the critical component to making this successful. So here we have, this is probably the simplest one to do. It's the looking into a mirror. And I've seen this done a variety of ways where you have one person looking into a mirror, one object looking into a mirror, the other side of the mirror is telling a story. So in this case, it's the older version of yourself looking back at you. Uh, I've seen it where I've seen like a kitten looking against a mirror and seeing a lion on the other side. It's what you want to be. I mean, those kinds of things. Um, and so when you're, when you're setting this sort of scene up, you really have to pay attention. Uh, in this context, very easy. You take two pictures, camera on a tripod. First picture is of the person looking at themselves in the mirror. Then you swap out the person, take the second picture uh, of the old man. You use just his reflection in the mirror. And the mask is rather simple. Uh, it's just a matter of isolating the frame right there and causing the two images to come together. It's a very, very simple mask to do. So we move forward. Um, some of these border on the creepy a little bit, but they're kind of entertaining at the same time. So is this exaggerated? Sure. But this is definitely a way of masking one object to the other. But part of the reason it works is because the shadows match up. So if we look at this carefully for a second, the photograph of the nose, which obviously is blended into the fingers, that, those, that doesn't exist by default, has a shadow that's cast on the left side there. Similarly. The shadow that's cast on the finger here is on the left side. So the light in both of these is coming from that direction to cast the shadow. Actually, it's a little bit more in that direction. And we end up with the shadow here and the shadow right here, which is part of what makes it mind-bending or, or realistic in some sense. So even though that couldn't actually happen, the light conditions make it work. Right? Sometimes you take it a little bit far. This one's a little weird. Another example here, very much in the same vein. To me, this isn't as good because it's a little bit more of an artificial construct. So in this case, it's the white background. The object's just cut out on the white background. The shadows are fake. Yeah, I, I don't think it works quite as well. This one I love. It's again on a white backdrop, which I think it would be more creative if it wasn't on a white backdrop. But this is about seeing two objects that naturally blend together. And what they've done really well is they've taken the natural wrinkles that would occur on the, on the toes on both sides, you know, your knuckles on your toes, and made a match up with the wrinkles that occur naturally on the leather. And so by making those two come together, it starts to add this layer of realism. This one is very, very hard to do because you have to get the images just right to combine. And I've seen people try to do this one before. This, I think, is very, very well done. The shadows work very nicely in this. But again, it's a pretty hard one to get the masking. On the surface level, the masking is not that hard to make these follow through. It's the lighting conditions, because it's very hard for you to get the exact same shadows on your face as the leaf on the ground outside. 
I mean, you'd have to lay down kind of on top of the leaf and take the picture from the same angle. It's just, it's a challenging one to do. This one, you have something in the foreground, something in the background. Blurring out the background helps in this context because we, using our minds, can, can interpret that that's a hole in the person. If it was sharp in the background and we actually saw this, this black void, it would look very fake. But by blurring the background, we interpret via our minds that that is, oh, that's an actual hole. It's a puzzle piece uh, as opposed to being too realistic. So this technique can work really nicely for these to come together. Sometimes it's a combination of a drawing and a photograph or something that's happening to a drawing or a photograph. And I'll show you some more examples of this strategy later on. Sometimes it's a matter of just creatively thinking about what does this look like? So you're in the store, you see the pile of carrots. What if there was an eyeball at the end of one of the carrots? It's, it's, it's a creativity thing. So you think about what's out there. And if you can combine them in a sense that it's kind of semi-realistic, it works really nicely. I love this one. I think it's great. Uh, again, a little bit hard to do. They did, they did a pretty decent job in the shadows. If we look at the hand here, uh, the shadows on the lower side of the hand, the shadows on the lower side of the toilet bowl here. So it's working fairly well. It still looks a little bit, if you focus in right here, it still looks a little contrived. It's a little like it's just cut there. And it's just the fundamental difficulty of, of combining those images together. But at the same kind of very entertaining. The cracked desert skin with the eye. I think part of what makes this one successful is the combination of color and black and white. The surrounding skin is black and white. The eye itself is in color. And kind of the juxtaposition of the two really accentuate that. Love this one. This is a good one. Two, relatively simple to do. Two images. One image, and again, they have to be shot from the same uh, vantage point, same lighting conditions. One image standing in the pants right, with your toes showing. And obviously, your legs would be showing. You take that picture. Then you step out of the pants carefully, leaving the pants in relatively the same condition. And it's just a matter of masking out and showing the inside of the pants without your legs in it. So it's still a relatively easy one to do, but very creative at the same time. Harder to do in terms of molding and, and interpreting the skin a little bit. But again, obviously, a photoshopped image. This one's well done, again, because of the light conditions. I think the shadows are a little bit fake. But at the same time, it's definitely working because of the ways that, that the shadows are working uh, in this particular image. Somehow, this one just makes me giggle. I think it's funny. So I had to include it. There's another one of the, the simple reflection, right? Cat looking at the lion, that sort of thing. Are these students work? What? Are these students work? No. The, everything here is, is online work. I'll show you. We'll split, and I'll show you student work. Okay? That doesn't mean that the student work is, isn't as good or better than these. These are just example ideas. So you know, bending reality a little bit, doing something that you couldn't normally do, those kinds of things work nicely. These are always really cool images. I doubt that you can do this because you don't have the, the equipment and the high-speed photography necessary to actually shoot these images. Goofy, but why not, right? The problem with this image is you have to contrive what's inside. You have to create that inner shell. So you would have to photograph something like two cups or some way of, of giving the inside of the person. Or you'd have to create that with a natural gradient or something. That's the difficulty in these images. I just like it. Why not? Again, it's about thinking about things. It's about being creative. So if you had a fish tank, you could probably figure out how to combine these together. Uh, but it's the, same, it's the same kind of general strategy. You have uh, two images. You have the lower image here, and you have the upper image, and you mask one to the other. The key is in how these match up together. So you've got the rock. You've got a little bit of the rock bleeding in right in here, and then it transitions into the fish scales. So that's part of what makes it feel, quote, real. Another example here, I, I like the broken, the shattered arms. Um, this is, again, hard to do without actually shattering something and photographing the shattered object. 
seeing things, right? This would be somebody that with some kind of a music in inclination, right? The six strings turning into the six guitar strings and how they, they go together. But again, the shadows and the lighting conditions match up, which is part of what makes this work. Another example here, two images shot, one of the person ironing a shirt, the and obviously standing there, the second of the shirt and the pants draped over uh, the ironing board with the removal of the person's legs, et cetera. So you're ironing yourself. These kinds of things are creative and kind of fun, uh, and a lot of times very, very successful. This one, unfortunately, is a little bit dark, but it's playing with the idea of perspective, where the floor becomes the ceiling, and you're looking down at yourself, looking up at yourself. Again, two images, two different angles, but in terms of how they're combined together, they're done very nicely. The melting ice cream. Right. Another example here, it's a little bit dark. Uh, you guys will have to look at this later on. But the sheet, the bed sheet, turns into snow in a winter scene uh, down below. So it's seeing two things that, that really match up together. I love this one. Two, two different images. One is the stormy sky, one is the sunny. And they've applied the sunny to these paper rolls that are, that are being papered up. Um, so it's a, it's a nice combination of two images. These ones start to get a little bit harder to do because you're combining more than just two images uh, in order to make these kind of work out, especially with the, the upside down little tree there with the roots coming out. Although if the tree was really that large, the root ball would not be that small. So it kind of, you know, it's a bending reality, certainly. Another example here uh, where they're, they're painting the ocean in to the boards. At some point, and if you look very carefully, you can kind of see right about there now, you guys can't see it as well on the projector. On my screen, it's easier to see. There's a, there's a seam, and you can see the end of the deck that's being painted. So those are the kinds of things, if, if I were doing it, I would have blurred that out just a little bit more so you had a smoother transition between the two. Uh, but again, it's nicely done. Pulling the road behind you. So it's a combination of the image with the tarp and the image with the road and how the two combine. I'm betting that the primary mask occurs with this image, obviously there's, there's a blend between the two here, but that this is one image. So this would be one, and this would be the second image, like that, in terms of how they're combining together. So you have to kind of look at it. They're using a little gla grass brush, and they're using some strategies in terms of how they combine together, but that's how they created these two images. Lighting conditions are obviously pretty surreal, but at the same time, kind of a creative take on, on rowing in the middle of a field. I love this one, again, because it's a switch in perspective. So we've taken part of the image, we've broken it, we've flipped it down, and then we go straight down, and then we flip, and then we continue on. I think to do something like this successfully, you really have to understand how perspective works so that you can fake it so that it feels like it's a realistic perspective. So it takes a little bit more work. It's obviously a more advanced strategy, but it's kind of fun. Uh, the stitching of winter into summer or into fall, and how the two work together. This one's just fun. Why not? So other than you have to think about how you're going to lift your dog into the air and then remove yourself from that lift. Uh, if you look carefully at this one, I'm betting that somebody's hand was right there because the, the stomach of the dog is tucked up there in terms of how it's being lifted. So you ha just have to think through those kinds of things. Uh, the, the lady is obviously standing in the image. Somebody would have been standing behind. You know, there's the person. The arms would be holding there, right there, something like that. And the person would be lifting it. And then you'd remove the person later on. And you'd, you'd um, mask in the background part of the image to cover mm -hmm. it up. Lots more work to create something like this, partly because you have to create the inside of the house and you have to deal with the perspective. You probably, to do this, you probably have to do some renderings and, and whatever. So it's, again, a little bit more advanced. The transition of the ink. Turning a picture into stone. This is relatively easy to do. So let's look at some student examples. So thus far, everything I've shown you uh, is, is internet-based examples. Obviously, there's Photoshop experts out there. But I think the student examples, a lot of times, are as good or better than what's out there. Uh, there's nothing wrong when you're creating these sorts of things of looking online, trying to get ideas. 
right? You're going to do something that's your own, that's creative, that's, that, that is a, a hallmark of you. But at the same time, if you look at things that other people have done, sometimes you get an idea of, of the direction that you want to go. So seeing the dog's face, this is kind of like seeing the animal in the clouds, seeing something in the rocks, and actually combining the two together. Um, Arash was here, was a student a long time ago. He does not have these tattoos. These were all added as part of it, nor does his mouth have a zipper across it. Those were all uh, combined together. This one's just kind of creepy, but it was really well done in terms of subtlety. This one, I think I've shown you this one before. Um, again, it's the combination of the two images. And I think um, Hajir did this really, really nicely. And again, this is probably four, five, six years ago. But kind of in how the two images combine, the lighting conditions, they work well together. So this one is not a particularly exciting photo by any means. Okay? If you look at it, you're like, eh. All right, compositionally, it's not great. However, I include this as part of the examples because it works so well, because the student thought a lot about lighting conditions. So in this, this is your most basic, it's kind of night, my settings aren't that great, I just take a shot with a flash. At the same time, when they went back and, and took the picture of their dog to, to Photoshop the dog picture, they did the same thing, kind of night, kind of same time, with the flash, front on. And the two images, because of the lighting conditions, work perfectly together. And so it's, it's really about the light more than it is about anything else. Sometimes they end up a little bit more artistic than, than, than others, but um, it certainly can work. Another example here of the transition of the dress into the flower. The key is making sure that you have the flower in the same lighting conditions as the dress. And of course, with dodge and burn, you can fake some of it, but you can't fake it all. Another example here, I told you that some people choose to do the combination of drawing into the photograph or vice versa. In this case, the hand drawing is actually drawing the tattoo on the back of the girl. And so it's working nicely. I think one of the things that helps these to work even better is when the hand or the drawing or whatever reaches in from outside of the frame. So if, if I were doing this, the drawn hand and sleeve should really come out a little bit more beyond. So it's the reaching into the frame. It's breaking that, that picture plane. You guys saw this one on the, on the handout. Um, I think, again, one of the best ones that, that, that's been done in terms of it's the picture of the person against the wall. And then you have the same shirt hanging on the wall at the same height with the hanger. And then it's a combination of the two images. Bekem did this one a number of years ago. Uh, when she created this, it was again two images shot with a tripod, relatively easy to do in terms of the tripod, but she was sitting right on one of those drafting stools right here. So there's the drafting stool. She was sitting there. She took one image of her. Then she took herself and the drafting school stool away and took the second image. So you have the backdrop and you have her. Then it's a matter of masking out wipe this away. Then it's a matter of masking out the stool so that you see the backdrop. The key here is that she also got rid of the shadow of the stool that would have been right there. And by getting rid of the shadow and the stool, you end up getting this real, quote, realistic floating image. Does that make sense? So it's really a combination of just two images working together. John did this one a while back. I think this is, again, another example of, of, of good creativity. Two images, one shot with him laying in bed, the other with just the pants, and it's a combination of the two. So you end up with, wait, I woke up with no legs. Right? It's kind of fun. Last example here, and this was kind of like those face hand things that I was doing before. I think this one works a little bit nicer because you also have kind of the perspective of the person in the hand. Um, and really, it's a pretty simple set of images. You have the image of him, then you have the image with his hand, and you let one of them show through into the hand. Lighting conditions the same. It's part of what makes it a successful final product. Another image here, uh, we've got the violin playing on the person. Again, a challenging one to kind of figure out how to do, but I think the lighting conditions are part of what makes this work nicely. Right, the smoke curls took a little bit of drawing make that work as well. 
Can you guys see it? Okay, you have to be far enough away, but I think this one's very, very subtle, but very well done. You've got the face and the bark. The half person forward and you know, looking forwards, looking from the side, the profile. I've seen this done a number of times. Um, again, the drawing into the actual photograph. The cut up prints. Obviously, this person was kind of channeling Walking Dead or, or something like that. All right, so we're going to move. So give me a second to switch over, and then we'll start talking about how do we do this masking in the first place. So for exercise 107, fundamentally what we're going to do is we're going to practice by isolating objects, or in this case, people. And I think trying to work through, I would pick up uh, people, which is the example that I'll do uh, live. But the other example would be like a tree. It's the same kind of strategy in terms of trying to isolate the object against the background. And really, the strategy here is to learn the, the best way of making a background go transparent such that you can use this image and put it into another scene, et cetera. And it will, it will teach you a lot about kind of highlighting objects, isolating them, um, being able to mask with them, et cetera. So I'm going to ask you to pick or to use the images that you shot of people earlier in the semester. Although a lot of times you find that you don't like your images or a foot's cut off or, or something like that. So you may need to do a Creative Commons search. So as I did before, I went to uh, search.creativecommons.org. I'm going to search Flickr because I think they have pretty good um, image archive of people. And then it's a matter of finding people doing something uh, that are, that's interesting. Uh, so I could type uh, person reading, for example. And I can look for a person that's reading. One of the important things here is when I pick somebody, I want to make sure that I include all of the person. So something like this one isn't bad, because if I look at it, I see the entirety of her. Right? Even her shoe is, is, is included there. What I don't want is somebody that's cut off halfway, because it makes the, the, the image far less useful. So if I was looking at something like this, for example, Right? This doesn't help me because I end up with the person in the coffee table and it only works in a composition that's exactly like this. So if I'm putting it into a scene, the person has to be in that position. If I pick something with a whole person, right, the other option is, is color versus black and white. So if I pick something like this, there's a whole person. This person is going to be more useful to me. I also might find that I want the person to be standing, for example. And so really, a large part of, of this is scrolling through lots and lots of images to find the, quote, right one, right? the right one to work with. And so it'll take some time to really, to really find the right person. I went ahead and I went through and found a bunch of people that I can then cut out. And I'm going to work with some of these people. Like this one is great, except for that bottom of his foot is cut off. Is it close enough? Could I fake it? Yeah, probably. But it would be better if I had a little bit more of his foot there. Right? So I've gone through and I've found a variety of images that I can work with. So let's start with something like this. This is a relatively easy one to do. The hair is not particularly outstanding. So let me take this one and I'm going to go ahead and download the original. So I come over to the little arrow with the line below it. I'm going to go ahead and download the original. And it's going to come down here. Let me show it in the folder oh, once it's done. And there it is. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And I'm going to put it into my flash drive under today's exercise, which is 107. Let me do a new folder here for spring of 2017. And I'll go ahead and I'll paste this one. There it is. So now I'm going to go ahead and open this image up in Photoshop. So I'll right click on it and I'm going to go to open with Adobe Photoshop. The alternative would be to have Photoshop already open and to say file open in Photoshop. All right, so now I have 
these two people, and I need to figure out how to cut them out. And there's a variety of strategies for how to cut them out. There's actually a bunch of tutorials on the course website. If we go under Photoshop, starting right here with 1.13 through about 1.6, all of those are different strategies for doing this. It used to be a lot harder to create these uh, cutouts than it is today. So I'm going to show you the easiest way, rather than go through all the different steps and make you do all the different steps. I'm going to show you the easiest way, because most of the time, it will work just fine. So before I get too involved in this, I'm going to go ahead and crop out all the background information that I really don't need. So I'll use the crop tool, which is right over here. And I'm going to shrink this down. Uh, let me make it unconstrained so that I can get these two people as close as possible. So right there, right there, go to right there, and right there. And I'll go ahead and crop it so that I get rid of excess stuff. Now I can work on just these people. I'll press Control-0, and I'm going to use a selection tool, which is either enabled by default or not. It's hidden underneath the magic wand. It's the fourth option down. And it's called the Quick Selection Tool. It may be already selected for you, maybe on top. And once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and start dragging a selection. And you see that as I drag that selection, it's looking for an edge for me. So it works pretty well. Once I've started, I can hold down Shift to continue selecting, and I can continue dragging. So in this context, it cut out the hat but it continued on as part of this person. So that's good so far, but I want the hat back. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, which should subtract from the selection, and I'll push that hat back up. Then I'll continue on my way. I'll hold down Shift, and we'll continue on there. I lost a little bit of that hat. Let me come back with the Alt key, and we'll work on it. It may also take zooming in a bit. So Control plus, and then I'm holding down Spacebar to pan. And then I can go back to holding down Shift, and I could add, oops, sorry, it's Alt. And I could subtract that from the selection, something like that. So it looks pretty good. Looks like I missed a little bit right there. We can take that part out right there. That looks pretty good. We'll come along. We'll come back and fix that. I'm going to hold down Shift and continue down here. I actually need that part as well. So we'll, we'll go in there. I need to hold down Alt and get rid of this part. Right there. Shift, and we'll continue. Now, of course, it matters what the background is as to how easy it is to do these selections. If you're against a background that's a completely different color, this will go really quick. If you're against the background with a lot of objects that are the same, it'll be a little bit more challenging, as it is right here, where I just lost the whole arm. Right? So we work our way backwards and forwards. And eventually, you'll get the bulk of it. All right, so I'll continue here and there. I'm not going to spend quite as much time right now, because I want to show you a few other things. Okay, so I'd continue working my way through so that I can select it all. Like that. And I'd work my way up there. Hold down Alt. So let's get his arm back. OK, something like that. Once I've gotten that established, and I'm going to focus on just the top because the bottom I didn't spend too much time here. Once I have it set up like that, I have a couple options. Oh, you're right. I need to fix this part of the ear. So in this case, I don't really have anything that's too weird of a selection. I've got a little bit of a tuft of hair that's there. The rest of this isn't bad. The easiest thing to do would be go to, to go straight to a mask. So if I right click on the background layer, I can say layer from background to make it an editable layer. I get rid of the lock. And then I can come down here and say add layer mask. Oops, wrong direction. I have to invert the selection first. Let me go to select and then inverse. And then I could add the layer mask and I end up with these people cut out. The good news about a layer mask is if we look, oops, I cut out part of his head right there. Because it's a layer mask, and you guys worked with layer mask last class, I can come back with my brush with white. 
Let me make this a little bit smaller. That's just the bracket key. And I can paint that back in. So I didn't permanently delete it because it's a layer mask, which is one of the big advantages here. Okay, likewise, if there was something that I didn't like, I could flip back into black to make this a little bit smaller still. And I could get rid of that part of his ear, you know, something like that, et cetera. And you can work your way through. Now the problem comes, and you notice that on these images, obviously I lost a few legs down here, but they both are wearing hats. So it's really pretty easy to cut them out. If, however, I switched to an image, trying to find one, you know, let's do this one. See how there's wisps of hair coming out there? That's going to be a whole lot harder to cut out. So let's do that one. So let me go ahead and I'm going to download this in its original size. Show in folder. Oops. And I'm going to copy this one. Now this one's going to take me a little bit more time to do, and I want to actually do this in its entirety for you. Um, I just wanted to show you kind of the precursor steps going toward it. So let me go ahead and I'm going to switch into my folder for today. I'm going to paste this in. And then we'll go ahead and open that one up. All right. So on this one, I'm going to use the same thing. I'm going to do the quick selection tool. And I'm going to work my way around this object. But before I do it, let me go ahead and crop. And the advantage of the crop is it gets rid of stuff that I really just don't need, excess information. So there we go. Then I'll use the quick selection tool. I'm going to zoom in as I do this. And we're going to go ahead and start to drag this selection. Lost part of the face. Let's get the face back. There we go. I have these headphones. So let me trace down the headphones here. So obviously, it takes a little bit of time to get the selection right. Lost part of her hand. Let's get that hand back. There. Hold down Shift, and we're going to continue dragging that section. We could refine that just a little bit there. And we'll continue. So you can see hard shadow of this black edge against the light, really easy for Photoshop to determine where the edge is. So again, it de depends on what you're selecting. Oops. Hold down Alt. I'm going to work to get her leg here. Let's get her shoe back. There we go. We've got a little bit of shoelace trouble in here. So we'll zoom in a little bit. This one's a much harder one to see. Let's see if we can work our way through. Yeah, that one's not. We're going to cut off her shoelace for right now, and I'm going to come back and kind of deal with that a little bit later. So let me continue. Drag the bottom part of her shoe, except for that part. Control minus to zoom out a little bit. And we'll continue in this section. There we go. That did pretty well, except that we need to deal with her fitness tractor there, like that. Shift to add to selection. We'll add that section a little bit more right there. And eh, too much. Alt. So yes, this does take time. Work our way up there. Work way up there. I need her hand. Alt. Okay. Control minus. We'll continue. Go up. All right. But we want to keep her hair as part of the selection. There we go. Let's keep this. OK, so I'm getting close to her hair. But you can see those wisps that are coming off part of that hair. We're going to have to deal with that. 
Furthermore, I do need to make sure that I add this little area right there. There's a little bit right in there. There's a little bit right in there because I can see through her hair. So now I have this selection done, but it's not including all of these little wisps. And that's really the, the strategy here. And so what I'm going to do is up at the top here, I'm going to click on this Refine Edge button. And the Refine Edge will allow us to deal with these little wisps. And we'll, we'll be able to make some corrections. So that brings up this Refine Edge dialog box here. And when I have this, we're going to do a couple things. Under the Adjust Edge, we're going to do a smoothing of 3 and a feather of 0.3 and a radius of 1. Okay, so we have 1, 3, and 0.3. And under view mode, I have several options. The marching ants is what we were seeing before with the little dotting, dotted lines. Okay? Overlay mode, I think, is usually the easiest to work with. It shows what we have selected and not selected by either red or not. We could do on black where we're seeing black. We could do on white to see on white. We could see black and white. And so as we switch through these various modes, we can get a better sense of what's happening. So I'll continue to switch back and forth a little bit. Let me zoom in just a bit. No, oh, it's not going to let me zoom in. Let's see if I can do it now. There we go. And I'm going to, with my brush, I'm going to paint over this little wispy area. So let me paint over that area like that. And when I let go, see how it starts to highlight those wisps in red? I'll work over this edge there, like that there. Let's come up here. Let's paint a little bit in there. Paint a little bit there. A little in there. A little in there. A little in there. So it doesn't look like too much, except if I switch into on black, see how these are starting to show up a little bit? So the key on, on whenever you're trying to highlight something like this is that this is semi-transparent. So a little bit of the color shows through around what you have selected. So let me switch back to my overlay red. I'm going to work down these cords a little bit as well, but I don't want my brush to be so big. So I hold down um, the bracket key. Let me zoom in one more time. And I'm going to work right along the edge there, a little bit right along the edge there, a little bit there, a little there. like that. All right. Then I can work my way and I can check any other parts of her where we might have some issues. So the shoelaces were a good example. Let's paint over the shoelaces and we get a little bit of a highlight on the shoelace. Come over to the other shoelace. Probably have a little there, a little there, Maybe a little right in there with the sock. So with that edge. And so I'm just working my way around the person. Let's deal with her fingers a little bit. A little bit more hair right in there. All right, so I'm pretty happy. So I'll go ahead, and when I'm done, I'll say OK. And the selection essentially looks the same as it did before I did the Refine Edge. but there's a tiny little bit of selection that's in here that you just can't see yet. So I'll go up to my Select menu, and I'll select Inverse. With Inverse selected, or the person herself selected, I'll then right click on Background and say Layer from Background. And then I'll go ahead and click on the Add Layer Mask. And when I do that, you can see that some of her hair, zoom in a little bit, or that shadowing or that ghosting of the hair occurs along that edge. A so little, little bit occurs there as well. There may be some areas that need some refinement after I've done this. And we'll again look and see if there's anything that got cut off weird. Like there, right there, is a little bit um, see-through. So we need to deal with that. So I'll go ahead and make sure that I'm on the mask layer. I'll paint in white so that that becomes solid again. And we'll work our way down. Uh-oh. So clearly, I <laughs> missed her leg. So the good news about a mask is we can get her leg back. So let's paint her leg back in. I'm going to switch my brush here 
so that it is a sharp edged brush for right now. And I'm going to paint back in her leg. Like that. And then I have to go back and obviously correct that problem. So let me use that selection again. And we'll select along that edge. And we hold down Alt. Don't need that piece there. Perfect. So this selection, I'm no longer going to go back to the mask tool. I'm going to work with my paintbrush. So I'll go to paintbrush. I'm going to paint in black, and I'm going to paint that part out like that. Then I'll come back to my selection, and we'll select the back half like that. And I'll come back with my brush, and I'll paint this in black like that. So that's the advantage of working with the mask is we can always get it back when we make a mistake. So I now have this person isolated nicely, including the hair. I'm happy with the end results. I've looked her over and made sure that there's no weird transparency issues. So now it's a matter of saving this person so that I could use her later on. So I'm going to do a couple things. Number one, when I do the save, it has to be a PNG file. If you don't save it as a PNG file, it won't preserve the transparency. You'll get a, just a white, if it's a JPEG file, you get just a white background. So we need to make sure that we save it as a PNG. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Save for Web. And there we can see it on a white background. You can see a little bit of her hair as part of the shadow. And I'll go ahead, and instead of being in the JPEG, I'm going to go to PNG24. And you see that the background changes from being white to being the checkerboard pattern, which means it's transparent. So I now have the color version of this girl walking. So I'll go ahead and click on Save. And I'll save it into today's folder. There it is. And let's call this woman walking. And I'm going to add underscore color to it so that I know it's a color version of this. I'll go ahead and click Save. And it will preserve my transparency. Now I'm back here. The next thing that I want is I'll save myself a step later on as I'm going to convert this to black and white. So I'll go up to my layer, New Adjustment Layers. And this we've already done this in class. I'll go to Channel Mixer. I'll say OK. We're going to switch to monochrome. And then we're going to go through our presets to see which one looks the best. Right? So let's say it's this one. I'll go to File, Save for Web. It should be in PNG24, which it is. I'll go ahead and click on Save. And I have the woman walking in color. Now I'm going to have the woman walking in black and white. And I'll go ahead and click Save. All right, so there's the woman walking in black and white. Now I want it as if this is just a silhouette. So there's no tonal definition at all. It's just a silhouette. And so here's, here's to really making sure you understand how masks work. I'm going to create a brand new layer. And actually, let's turn off the two existing layers. I'll create a brand new layer. So I can either go to Layer, New Layer, or I can click the New Layer button down here at the bottom, either way. And on layer one right here, I'm going to paint using my paintbrush with a 75% gray. So here under CMYK, the K value is black and white. So I'll do 0, 0, 0, and then 75, which is kind of a nice neutral gray. Not warm, not cold, just neutral gray. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And I'm going to paint that in so that this whole thing is gray. So now it's all gray. So I have a layer that has a mask. I have a layer that is gray. Because I created this with a mask, and this is part of the advantage of a mask, all I have to do is click on the mask itself, hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, and drag the mask up to layer 1. And when I do that, it will make a copy of the mask that I created and give me the gray silhouette of the, of the woman. So now I can go ahead and file, save for web. Nope, looks like I missed that little bit of her, her hat. So there's, there's issues. I'll probably need to go touch that up. I'll go back to save. And this would be woman walking Oops. gray. And I'll click save. 
So I have three versions of my file. I have the gray version, I have the black and white version, and I have the color version. I'm now ready to post the first of five posts for today. So you're going to do this five times with five different people. You could substitute a person for a tree. If it gets to be a really complicated person, like a tree is probably complicated. If you wanted to do a tree, um, I'd probably give you like the equivalent of two people or something like that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make my post. So let me go to the website. I'm going to go to new post. There we go. And so this is going to be a woman walking. I'm going to go ahead and upload my media. So I'm going to click on add media, upload files, select files. And I'm going to pick all three of those images. One, two, and three. I'll go ahead and click on open. And it will upload all three. Maybe. Perfect. I'll go ahead and insert into post. And I should get all three images, which is what I want. I now need to set a featured image. So I'll scroll down to the right, click on set featured image. I'll pick the colored one and say set featured image. Maybe not. Come on. Try that one more time. There we go. Set featured image. And I now have the featured image. Notice that even when you upload it online, we see the checkerboard background. So now the last thing is people have a tendency to want to search for these sorts of things when you're finding people. And I should point out that if you go to the Resources tab and you go to Collage Images, there's lots of collage images that people have loaded before. We can go into People. We can say More People and show me females, males, etc. Right? And they're ordered by popularity, which ones are used more often. So they're all there for you. But I want to find a way of, of organizing this. So I'm going to go over to the right, and there's a collage images section. And this is where I'm going to start to try to categorize this. So this person is walking. There's walking. And it's not an animal. Right, we can come down here. Let's see here. It's people. So this is a person. It's female. Right? We can say this is a woman. Right, a lady, I guess. Anyway, you get the idea. So I tag it. When I'm done with the tags, I'll come back up. I do still want to make sure that it shows up under exercise 107. So I'll make sure I check that box as well. And then I'll go ahead and click on Publish. I didn't put my name in the post, which is fine. When I go to grade you for this, I'll see it anyway, whether you put your name in it or not, because I look you up by your accounts. So it, it doesn't make any difference. Um, with how that it's uh, how it's done, but that then will show up. There's there's all the versions of the people. There she is, right? And I can choose to download her if I click on her, for example. Right there she is, and I can right click and say save image as. So if you were looking for one, you can find it. Okay. So the 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 key here is that I'm making a post. Um, and it will go into the categories of, of, of females, etc. So I'm asking you to do five. Like I said, if you pick a hard one, right, uh, somebody, let's say you isolate somebody on a bicycle, right? Well, a bike has a lot of spokes and a lot of things to try to isolate. That counts as probably two. The point is that I want you to work today, all day, while you're here in lab, and however far you get will be fine. Okay? We're shooting for five. Um, make sure you make five separate posts. So I don't want one post with everything in it, each a separate post. Is that clear? Yeah? All right. So if you have, if you have trouble, let me know. And if not, um, make your posts.